how did we get here? Do you remember how Deputy President Rigathi Gachagwa was nominated as a running mate? Do you recall just how controversial that decision was? How it put the then Deputy President, now President William Ruto, in a difficult position? Media houses camped out the entire night waiting for the announcement. It wasn't smooth, do you remember? The tension was thick and the stakes were high. So how did we get to this point? where the same choice that shaped an election is now at the centre of Kenya's political storm. Was Rigathi Gachagua truly William Ruto's first choice from the outset? Or did Ruto, knowing the potential fallout, strategically choose Gachagua to secure immediate support, fully aware that their partnership could lead to the very conflicts we see unfolding today? Welcome back to Life Lens TV. I'm Jennifer Harrison and the mind behind this video is none other than Peter Tosh Williams. Today, we're diving into a crucial topic that could shake the very foundation of Kenyan politics. You see, when something is done without the right process, it's like building a house on sand. Eventually, the cracks start to show and the whole thing begins to fall apart. Think about a bridge constructed hastily, without proper reinforcement. You might not notice it at first, but over time the stress of weight and weather begins to show and one day that bridge comes crumbling down. Imagine an organization at a critical turning point. The CEO is faced with a tough decision, choosing a deputy president who will not only steer the company forward, but also represent its values. There are two candidates. The first is highly qualified, articulate, well-spoken with a proven track record of success in the company. This candidate has all the right credentials, a calm demeanor, and is respected by everyone. On paper, they are the ideal choice. Now the CEO is stuck. Choosing the first candidate means picking someone who is undoubtedly the better fit for the long-term vision of the company, but rejecting the second candidate could mean losing a key financial backer and risking a split within the ranks. The pressure mounts. The CEO knows that picking the resourceful candidate comes with baggage, compromise, and possible future conflicts, but the immediate benefits seem too big to ignore. The second candidate, however, lacks the same qualifications. They aren't as polished or experienced. But what they do have is influence, and a lot of it. They have deep financial resources and a network that could significantly benefit the organization in the short term. They've already invested heavily in the company's success and they know how to rally people to their cause. And so, despite the first candidate winning over the board with their qualifications, the CEO reluctantly chooses the second candidate. The decision is made, but deep down, the CEO knows that this choice could lead to instability down the road. The consequences of prioritizing resources over qualifications are already brewing beneath the surface. Today we're looking at a similar scenario unfolding in our political landscape, Rigathi Gachagwa's appointment as Deputy President, one that was secured not through merit, but through resources and some say threats. So, let's dive into the details. I present to you the Kenya Kwanzaa running mate candidate, my brother and friend, Rigathi Gashaba. Let's take it back to the year 2022. The race was heating up. William Ruto was in the final stages of choosing his running mate. There were several names on the table, but in the end it came down to just two contenders, Rigathi Gachagwa and Professor Kithur Kindiki. Now by all accounts Professor Kindiki was ahead. He was measured, he was calm, and in the eyes of many he was the more qualified candidate. Kindiki had proven his leadership in the Senate. He didn't have the bravado of Gachagwa, but in politics, Sometimes quiet strength is exactly what you need. But then something shifted. Sources reveal that Rigathi Gachagwa wasn't going to let this opportunity slip away. He wasn't ahead in the polls or favoured by the decision makers, but he had two things, resources and a willingness to push back so hard. Word is, the night before the announcement, Gachagwa threatened to walk out and galvanise his people in Nyeri. His people, who had heavily invested in the Kenya Kwanzaa campaign, weren't going to take that decision lightly. And just like that, Ruto found himself in a bind. Now let's pause here for a moment. 
Imagine being William Ruto. You've built a campaign on promises of change, fairness and good governance. You've got a brilliant qualified man in Kindiki, but then you've got Gachagua, a powerhouse with deep pockets and the loyalty of key figures in Mat Kenya. If you drop Gachagua, you risk losing significant financial support and regional backing. The stakes are high, and every second matters. And so, the announcement was delayed. The media camped outside Ruto's residence well into the night, expecting an announcement that never came. A decision that was supposed to be made at 10am was pushed to the following day. And why? Because, behind closed doors, Rigathi Gachagua was not giving up. He played his cards, the threats, the pressure, and Ruto, faced with a tough choice, finally gave in. The next day, Gachagua was named as Ruto's running mate. But let's be honest, was that the right choice? Many would say no. In fact, even back then, it was clear to some that Gachagua's appointment wasn't based on merit or qualifications. He wasn't the natural fit for the role of deputy president. Professor Kindiki had already won the internal contest, but it was Gachagua's influence, his resources, and his ability to bring the fight to Uhuru Kenyatta in Mount Kenya that sealed the deal. Remember, Gachagua had been on the front lines, relentlessly attacking Uhuru, tarnishing his name, and galvanizing the Mat Kenya region to turn against the president. That was his strength, his ability to rally people, to shake things up. But in the end, those aren't necessarily the qualities that make for a strong, stable deputy leader. Ruto needed Gachagua for the campaign. He needed someone who could fund the movement, someone who could face down the regime, and Rigathi had that in spades. It's no secret that even Uhuru's administration knew Rigathi was the one funding the Kenya Kwanzaa campaign. They froze his accounts. They arrested him repeatedly, especially on Fridays, so he would spend the weekend in jail. But Gachagua kept coming back. He sacrificed a lot for the campaign, and in the end, Ruto had no choice but to name him as the running mate. And now, we're starting to see the consequences. Today, Rigathi Gachagua stands accused of being behind the Gen Z protests, which were viewed by some as a civilian coup attempt. There are even rumors that he funded these protests, and more recently, he's been silent, letting his allies publicly insult William Ruto's team, even referring to them as dogs, and their leader as the owner of the dogs. If we look at this through the lens of oral literature and symbolism, the message is clear. The owner of the dogs is none other than President William Ruto. These comments signal deepening cracks in their relationship. And here's where we circle back to that bridge analogy. Ruto knew this might happen. He knew when he chose Gachagua that it wasn't going to be smooth sailing. This was a political decision made under pressure, and now we're seeing the strain. Let's not forget, Gachagua wasn't William Ruto's first choice. He was an expedient choice, a choice made out of necessity. And now, the chickens are coming home to roost. When you build on shaky ground, the foundation always crumbles eventually. So, what's next for Ruto and Gachagua? Will Ruto choose to keep him close to maintain stability in Mount Kenya? Or will these cracks continue to widen? One thing is certain. The decisions made in 2022 are still reverberating through Kenya's political landscape today. That's all we have for you today. I've been your host, Jennifer Harrison, and the mind behind this video has been Peter Tosh Williams. Thanks for tuning in to Life Lens TV, and as always, goodbye Kenya.